Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I present you my top 5 new features on the new Adobe Lightroom CC. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Sir Germany. I am a French photographer living in Los Angeles and Paris and I make one tutorial per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file for this episode or click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Mesdames et messieurs, Lightroom CC just came out this morning. It's a really game changer. I'm going to show you in this video my five top best feature in this amazing software. You will want to get this one. All right, guys, so I'm really excited to talk to you about my five favorite um, features in Lightroom CC. I've been working on Lightroom CC for a few months actually because I'm preparing a book for it. And so I kind of know the, all the new stuff. I'm going to show you the five best one. So let's get to it. Number one, believe it or not, making panoramas in Lightroom without using another software. It's very straightforward. What I think is going to be a revolution for photographers is that when you make panoramas with Lightroom CC now, they stay as raw file. So what I mean is, for example, this is a panorama I want to do. And what I used to do, if you follow my tutorials, is I used to retouch one photo and synchronize what I did on a, a second photo. And then I would go to uh, Photo Merge to merge the panorama. Now, if you right click and you go in this new option called Photo Merge and Panorama, not only, I have not retouched the photos yet, uh, or I hardly retouched the photos. Actually, let me just show this to you. All I did is I boost up the shadows and the whites on both of these photos, but I didn't do the white balance. Usually I always do the white balance before doing my panoramas because once you are into Photoshop, well, let me go to photo merge and panorama. Once you are into Photoshop doing your, uh, your panorama, you've exported out of Lightroom, you are now as a TIFF file or PSD file, and your white balance and other factors like, you know, uh, noise reduction, etc., is baked in. Meaning that if you don't retouch your photos before going into Photoshop, that's how it used to be, and you make your panorama and then you re-import it into Lightroom, it would be very hard uh, later on to change the colors, change the white balance, because everything has been baked in as soon as you left Lightroom. Now check this out. See, this is the preview. I've got different uh, perspective uh, of a uh, 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 preview that I can have syn uh, spherical cylindrical perspective. You can click here on auto select the projection and it's going to figure out which one is the best for you. You can auto crop or not your pano and click on merge. Now you would say that's the same thing than photo merge in, uh, in Photoshop. Yes, indeed. But the cool thing is that the resulting panorama is still a DNG file. It's still a RAW file, meaning I can do all my retouching, which is what I'm going to do now after I did my panoramas. And for me, it's a big game changer because what happened often is that I would retouch each photo. I would synchronize my retouch on all the photos, make my, uh, you know, make my panorama and re-import it into Lightroom. And then I would go, oh, damn, I should have done a different white balance or I should have done a different exposure. Now, I can always tweak it but it's going to be a lot harder. So this is the final result. Now check this out. It's called untitledpano.dng. It's not a TIFF file. It's like a super raw file, but a panorama. And that's the new thing. And look, what I did here on the first photo, which I showed you before, the shadows and the whites, is there, meaning I can just put it back to what it was. And it's, it's just like a super raw file. So now I can do my editing after I've done the panorama. And I can really decide like, Okay, I'm just gonna do a really quick retouching this. I can really decide, okay, the white balance, I want it to be shade and this, and I can really decide afterwards what, um, what I'm gonna do with it because it's hard to retouch a panorama when you don't have a grand view of it. Now you can do all your retouching afterwards. And I don't know how they do it, but now you've got this sort of super raw file. So that's the first feature I love, making panoramas in Lightroom without any other software and keeping them as raw file, believe it or not. So the second feature is HDR raw file. So same thing. This is three photos. Okay, I didn't do any retouching. I mean, it's just the raw files. You can now select all three, right click, you go to photo merge, HDR. And so you've got this new window called the HDR merge preview. And what that's gonna do is gonna create a super raw file uh, that you can then retouch. We had this a little bit earlier by going into Photoshop and making like a 32-bit HDR and then retouching it as a TIFF file. But this is still a DNG. 
meaning that the white balance again is not baked in. It's a big game changer because before, uh, you know, I would do my HDR in Photomatics. So I'm not saying you don't need Photomatics or other software, but I'm saying it's a great opportunity. Now you can choose, you can auto align, auto tone. I don't do that. Deghost amount. Uh, I'm going to do none on this one because uh, nothing was really moving. And I'm just going to click on merge. And all that's going to do is create like a super DNG file. Uh, sort of a 32-bit DNG file, and it's going to re-import it as a as a DNG file. And now I can do all my retouching afterwards. Once I've done that, I don't have to make a 32-bit file uh, in Photoshop or anything. It's all there. So you just you know, uh, and here is now my super DNG file that I can just retouch. And check this out. So now I've got all the dynamic range, the shadows and the highlights, and you know, and my white and black, and. Uh, so you got you have less noise in the shadows, you know, more details in the sun because now it's a 32 huge HDR file all within Lightroom CC. I didn't have to use any other software. So let me just add a bit of magenta, maybe maybe cool it a little bit and add a bit of magenta because I'm crazy about that. And anyways, and do so you just treat the result, uh, the result as a raw file, except now that it's got three exposures, three different exposure. Uh, and you can go up to five exposures, which is really cool. Okay, so now here is my third best feature in Lightroom CC. And this is something I've wished for. They started doing it in Camaro, and now it's in Lightroom 6, uh, sorry, Lightroom CC. And um, the way it works is this. Uh, remember in the past, I'm gonna put up the shadows, bring down the highlights, do my white and my black on this photo. Okay, regular contrast. Now I'm gonna boost the exposure so you see what I mean. Okay, I like this, but I think the sky is too, uh, bright. So in the past, I would go here and, you know, I would go to exposure and do uh, minus exposure here and just make this like this. And it's great. It makes the sky more interesting. But the thing is, it changed also that lighthouse. Check it out. Look how the lighthouse is getting darker. Let me just increase this a little bit more if you want to make this even more dramatic. You see how I want the sky to be affected by this gradient, not the lighthouse. But now here's this new option here. You can click on brush, and now you have a brush in the same time that you have a graded filter. And what I want is I want to erase a graded filter just on the lighthouse. So click on the Alt key so your, uh, your brush becomes a minus brush. Make sure auto mask is on. And with auto mask on, I can just make sure that my uh, minus sign is on the lighthouse. And I can just paint on the lighthouse, just like that. And now my graded filter is not, if I hover this, is not influencing the lighthouse. Check it out. It only makes the sky darker, not the lighthouse. Now that option, that option of, uh, of the brush also works with a radial filter. Here is an example. Let's say uh, I want to make a little grade, I'm gonna make a radial filter here. I'm gonna invert the mask, so anything that I do is gonna be inside. And what I wanna do is add some yellow and some orange to make the, the sky even, you know, put more emphasis on the, on the, on the sunset. So. I'm going to feather this. So this is my radial filter, okay? Now it's here and it's big. And if for some reason, uh, let me exaggerate it. Let me just uh, maybe boost the exposure, something, just so I'm exaggerating. Okay, but I don't like what it does here on the building. I can always find to my rail filter with the brush. Same thing. I click Alt and I, I can minus out what that radial filter is doing so that it only affects the sky. Okay, now I'm gonna lower the exposure. Okay, and let me show you the before and after. And if I over the right of filter, you'll see it's only, it's not influencing the building anymore. So it's not just like a, a rounded, uh, you know, sphere of influence. Now it's like tailor-made. So really cool feature. My fourth best feature is this new option. You go to preferences and there is a thing called on the, this tab called performance, which is to use a graphic processor. Now, Lightroom CC uses a graphic processor to make things faster, and check this out. This is the official document from Adobe, and uh, this is in percentage, the speed that they have on uh, you know, doing exposure, distorting, gradual filter, cropping, panning, grid, etc. It's it just like Lightroom is literally four to five times faster now that it uses a, the GPU. So that's a really cool figure. It's kind of like behind, you know, the engine sort of thing, but it's really cool. Uh, 
And my last favorite one, there's many new features, but my last favorite one is, uh, let me go to my library warning. I'm going to take uh, my photos from my New York book, which is coming soon. Here it is. Okay. It's this ability, when you go on the web, the ability to make HTML5 galleries. I use galleries all the time because every time I do a shoot, uh, I always send to uh, my, uh, my client the resulting uh, you know, shoot. And I like to do it with a nice gallery. The problem is that with prior version of Lightroom, I had to, um, I had to use flash galleries because the HTML galleries that they had was really, really bad. And now they made like awesome HTML5 galleries. And the problem with the flash galleries is that I would send it to my customers. They would look at it on their iPhone and say, oh, I cannot see the gallery. So it was tricky. I had to buy third party galleries or just use a very ugly HTML one. Well, now they got very, very awesome and nice galleries, which are HTML fully compatible with, um, uh, you know, with, with iPhones. And this is really for me a game changer. Voila, that is my five best top features. Uh, Lightroom has got many other features, like for example, you can uh, here into, let me go to all my photos here. Uh, you can uh, sort your photos by face detection. So you can take somebody's and you see all the photos of him, that's me for example. Um, you have in a slideshow module the ability to um, the ability to make cannon burn effects on slideshows and use up to five tracks of music. That's something that was not possible. So to recap, one, making panoramas with keeping the raw format. Two, doing HDR while keeping the raw format. Three, the ability to use brushes to help you graded filter and your gradual filter to be more tailor-made. Four, performance. And five, HTML5 galleries. This is really my top five features in Lightroom CC. Also, I'm happy to announce that I have a new full Lightroom CC training coming out. It's almost seven hours of video with exclusive content, exclusive workflows, project, all new. And here is the trailer. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that Lightroom CC is out, as well as my Lightroom CC full training. It's almost seven hours of videos where I'm going to take you through the entire software. First, how to organize, import, sort your photos, use the new face detection option to find very fast portraits of people. Then we're going to spend a lot of time in the retouching modules with nine full workflows, including panoramas, HDR, beauty shot, lifestyle portrait, dramatic black and white, selective colors, split toning effects. I'm going to show you also how to create presets and how to install them. We're going to look at the whole map module. Then we're going to make a book and a slideshow on New York using the photos I've been shooting over the last year. I will then show you the print module and how to print from Lightroom and the brand new HTML5 web galleries to show your work to the world. This training includes over 20 exclusive raw files, high resolution files that you will get as part of the training, never used before, never shown before. I hope you love it. Here is my Lightroom CC full training.